This chair was designed in 1962. It's been in constant production for the last 50 years. This marine waterproof wall clock design dates back to 1964. The speed of new product design in Japan far outstrips that of any other country. But some designs become so popular, they never get old. Kenmei Nagaoka is a designer who focuses on such enduring vintage products. Design. I think most designers today see their vocation as being one of creating new and original things. Their major aim is to make products that look fresh, that will stand out for their newness. It's that way of thinking that I'm hoping to change. On today's Design Talks, we meet Kenmei Nagaoka, who follows a philosophy he calls long life design. Tokyo is famous as a city that recreates itself almost daily. Nagaoka curates a design museum situated in one of Tokyo's most dynamic districts. This is the D47 Museum. The D stands for design, and the 47 for the number of prefectures in Japan. It highlights the best work from every corner of Japan featuring everything from textiles to the work of up-and-coming artisans. Sometimes concentrating on one prefecture, other times displaying items from all 47. The focus is on traditional crafts selected by leading designers. The current exhibition showcases Japan's sixth smallest prefecture, Saga. Examples of exceptional saga design are displayed in tableau inspired by the way the exhibition designers discovered them. Here we are being welcomed at a hot spring resort with hot tea and sake. Wow! I've never seen anything like this before. These are dishes from an inn set out for breakfast. And this chair is straight from the bar lounge. It's so charming. Look at all this stuff on display. Saga is one of Japan's most famous traditional ceramic centers. You've heard of Arita, Imari, and Karatsu ware. But there are plenty of distinctive new ceramic styles coming out of Saga today. Oh, Shala, look. How cute! What a throwback. Totally. Those polka dots. We had these at home, my grandma had them, company reception rooms had them. Really? It was the standard everywhere in Japan. Seems very modern, though. Now they do. I never thought about it before, but looking at them now, they're really stylish. Kenmei Nagaoka produces these exhibitions. His main goal is to unearth designs from each prefecture that have a long history behind them. He calls them long-life designs. Ah, I see. And we'll be hearing more about that today. Mm, can't wait. One place Nagaoka finds many of these classic designs is Kyoto. He's currently fascinated by the traditional Kyoto wooden row houses called machiya. They were mostly built to contain shops facing the street, with living quarters behind. With their latticed windows and unique architecture, machiya are a distinctive part of the Kyoto landscape. However, in recent years, large numbers of machiya have fallen vacant and are being demolished. Nagaoka feels compelled to help save these buildings, this iconic long-life design unique to Kyoto. An architect friend takes him to a 250-year-old machiya that's about to be renovated. Over there they use to keep the bolts of fabric. It's ready to use as a shop, just like this. It's tatami, so no shoes. A fun way to shop. I like it. We can make use of the original design. This machiya used to sell dyed fabrics. Customers would take off their shoes to step up into the tatami floored area. 
where they'd be served tea as they inspected the fabrics. Nagaoga wants to retain both the Machia's original design and this traditional old Kyoto style of retailing. Classic designs and the wisdom for living that they embody. Machia were designed to last centuries with proper maintenance and repairs. This is 250 year old mud plaster taken from the walls. Kneaded with plenty of water, it's ready to be reapplied. Yes. They really thought about the long life of their designs back then. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Nagaoka. Hello! Hello! Well, I've never been to a store like this before. <laughs> never? No. No. Nagaoka arranged to meet at a huge second-hand store outside Tokyo. This is the place that launched him on his path as a non-designing designer. To a designer, this is a design graveyard. A graveyard of designs? But it's incredible, all the stuff they have here. There's a lot of useful stuff, but if it doesn't sell even here, it'll go for trash. That's kind of sad. Japanese people prefer new, trendy products. Yeah, they do. People want the latest model of everything, so new models are always coming out. Older models, even if they still work, are just tossed away. Yeah, that's true. Looking at the stuff they have here, it struck me that it was all created by designers. Even things that were once the latest and greatest ended up here in this graveyard of design. The realization shocked me. As a designer myself, I decided to stop designing new things and engage with design from some other angle. And that's what led you to your concept of long life design? Yes. There are plenty of things here that can still be used. Why don't you two see what you can discover? Let's do it. Can Andy and Shaola find some great designs lurking in this warehouse of discarded products? Wow! Oh, look at all of these dishes. Whoa. Mm. It's so hard to choose. How about this? Is this a long life design? This is hard. Nagaoka looks at more than appearance. He asks whether it is made of honest materials. Can it be repaired again and again to keep it useful? Look how the legs are rusting already. If this was for the commercial market, it would be made of high quality stainless steel that doesn't rust. But consumer products use cheap stainless that rusts easily. So it looks nice, but it's really junk. What items have they picked out? Shala, why did you pick that? I thought it looked cute. It is cute. It reminded me of those cups with polka dots in your design museum we visited this morning. Hmm, yeah. Uh, but this is plastic. Hmm. And that rules that out for you? Yes. It's true that the shape and pattern are timeless, though. The form is right, but not the material. Andy, you took this very seriously. I love cooking, so I look for things to use in the kitchen. I see. I found this first. Such an old-fashioned kettle. Yes. Like old ladies have on the stove. Steam always coming out of the spout. What did you pick, Mr. Nagaoka? I found this chair. Uh-huh. Right. Mm. This is good design because the construction is simple, just the right balance. Right. Mm. If it gets ripped, you can easily reupholster it. Mm. Simple to use. That's basic to long life design. Yes. Mm. I picked this stool, too. <laughs> ah, that's so cute. Retro. Here's one with almost the same design. But a black stand. But this one is junk. Because it's painted? No, it's the design. Where the base attaches. Ah. And the material. You spot all the little details like this. Things we would never notice. Mm. 
Wow. I love design, so I'm picky about details. On the other hand, I don't care how dirty something is if it has underlying value. You need the right kind of eye to spot a piece with design value that will be successful if you put it back on the market. I search for such cast-off treasures. Recognizing the true value in cast-off designs. The value that makes them loved and used for years to come. This is Kenmei Nagaoka's mission. Next, Nagaoka brings Andy and Shaola to the shop he opened in 2000. It stocks used items he's found in secondhand shops, as well as new products that have been selling for decades. But every one is a design Nagaoka rates as top notch. A shop dedicated to the value of design. All the merchandise selected personally by a designer. It's been open now for 14 years, but Nagaoka's concept remains unique. And what's this? These are chairs from elementary school art and science classrooms. Oh. This is so cool. Now you say it's cool. Isn't it? They had the same one back in that second hand shop. There you go. I never spotted it. Presentation makes all the difference, I guess. It looks good here. Totally cool. My job is to make things look cool. I like all the keys in the locks. We made these from old elementary school desks. We used these when I was in school. I studied on a desk just like this. <laughs> it's all scratched up and written on. Yeah, I see that. When elementary schools close, they dispose of large numbers of these desks. Nagaoka turns the tops into photo frames and mirrors. Look on the back. That's an original part. Mm. This bracket attached to the side of the desk. Yeah, I see. To hang a school bag from. Now you use it... To prop up the frame. Clever. Nagaoka's embrace of recycled and remade items led him to respect the work of one designer above all. Before Masahiro Mori, Japanese ceramics were either works of art created by famous potters or mass market pieces made by nameless artisans. Mori really started the trend for potteries to produce pieces designed by designers. This soy sauce crit is a perfect example. It's the standard one you see everywhere. This was designed in 1958. So it's been selling for more than 50 years? The biggest reason this design has sold so long is that it functions so perfectly. When you pour soy sauce from one of these, it will not drip. Ever. <laughs> Try it and you'll see. No drips. Because design is not just about form, proper function is also essential, right? Ceramics are handmade, so people thought they couldn't be made precisely. No one even tried. But Mori applied his designer's mind and showed that ceramics could be as precise as factory-engineered products. A soy sauce cruet invented in 1958. Two years later, the Japan Design Committee chose it for the first Good Design Award. It was designed by Masahiro Mori. Born in a region with a 400-year history of ceramics, he studied the local craft and went on to dedicate his life to porcelain designing. He was aged 30 when he designed this soy sauce cruet, based on a radical idea. Conventional thinking was that the spout of any ceramic vessel was always going to dribble at least a little bit. So they were always sold as a set with a saucer to catch the inevitable drips. Of course, that made them harder to carry around. Mori thought about it and decided to design one that wouldn't need a saucer. Mori once said that the job of design is to pursue ease of use and give it form. Anything that is hard to use is a bad design. In order to eliminate the need for a saucer, he experimented with many shapes for the spout and positions for the hole. 
Finally, he found one that no longer caused dribbling. This is the shape that resulted from Modi's quest for functionality. The shape was so attractive in its own right, it had no need for decorative patterns. It started a fashion for all white ceramics. Are these bowls all Mori designs too? Even the colors and patterns? Yes. Really? But they look so contemporary. The shapes too. The colors could easily be the season's trend colors. It's uncanny, don't you think? They don't seem dated in the least. Not at all. They don't seem new or old. That's long life design in a nutshell. Now these are products made for institutional use. Products for use by institutions like hotels and hospitals also fall under Nagaoka's long life design philosophy. The design of institutional products has a functional beauty. Their shape comes from the pursuit of functionality. Most designers start by trying to create a cool shape. But institutional products are the result of seeking pure functionality. Everything unnecessary has to be pared away, and that's what makes them beautiful. These are for hospitals, right? You see them in the movies all the time. The doctor digs out a bullet or something and drops it in a dish like this. <laughs> exactly. At my house, we use them to hold sponges in the kitchen. Good idea. Good idea. The stainless steel in medical products is very high quality. It won't rust. No. You have a good idea there. What's this used for? To rinse your mouth. Mm. You could use it for that at home. Or a shot glass? Sure. You can find lots of uses. Institutional products are not about nifty new shapes, like this ashtray. You never have to worry about whether a new model of ashtray is coming out and if you should buy it. It's always this design. Never changes. Hearing why he selected these products somehow makes them seem more attractive. Your turn, Shaola. I love glasses. I totally love them. How about these, Shaola? Are they old school enough? I love the colors. So nostalgic. In the old days, they melted down and recycled beer bottles, right? These have a nostalgic feel because the color reminds us of that old recycled glass. Interesting. Beautiful. Why does it say 60? That's for 60 Vision, my series of revivals of 1960s designs. So these are newly manufactured? Yes, these are brand new. In the 1960s, factories that made glass for beer and soda bottles used their expertise to also create sturdy colored glasses for coffee shops and restaurants. When fast food came along, the glasses went out of production. But Nagaoka loved this design, so he revived it. He launched a new brand using advanced pigment technology to create a more colorful lineup. The glasses aren't the only revived products in Nagaoka's 60 Vision brand. Even better known is a series of Western-style furniture from the 1960s. The design is just the same. Exactly like the 60s. Right, try sitting in it. Okay. Is it the same size too? Identical. So is this one. Does it suit me? <laughs> uh, it's so comfy. This one's a 1960s chair too. Cool. I asked the manufacturer to make a table that would match the chairs, a new design. Brands should create new products using their classic products as a reference point. But so often today's designers create new stuff without even a glance at their roots, no context. They don't care about anything except making a hit. 
My 60 Vision brand is built from the roots up. In the 1960s, companies had a strong sense of mission. They believed in their goal of making people's lives richer through sturdy, well-designed products. As a designer, I created 60 Vision to promote awareness and appreciation of that era, a time when manufacturers seriously believed in the power and value of good design. Nagaoka considers the 1960s to be the birth of Japanese product design. Japan had recovered from the Second World War, becoming an exporter of precision manufactured goods from cameras to clocks and automobiles. The need was for designers to create products that consumers all over the world would want to buy. The early Japanese designers of this period were powerfully motivated by the belief that design could enrich and bring beauty into people's lives. Nineteen sixty two saw the launch of the Karimoku sixty living room furniture, a product of that period's passion for design. Our designers in the 60s went to Europe and the US to see for themselves how chairs were actually used and immerse themselves in the study of chair design. They didn't want to just copy. They wanted to make chairs of a size and style matched to life in Japan. They studied how to create balanced designs that had the right proportions. The machinery is now more advanced, but the production process for making the Karimoku 60 remains essentially unchanged. Wood being a natural material, varies in density and expands or contracts with changes in temperature and humidity. So an expert human touch is needed to work it. The company takes pride in its use of advanced woodworking techniques for the Karimoku 60. These were originally developed to craft piano keys and hammers. 22 people are involved in making a single chair and just 75 pieces are produced each day. The designers of the 60s created a high-quality chair to fit Japanese homes. By 2002, demand had dwindled and we thought the Karimoku 60 was finished. But 60 Vision introduced a new generation of young people to our product, and we are still proud to be making it today. The Karimoku 60 began as the furniture of people's dreams faded into normality and was on the verge of expiring. Now it's popular again among the young and hip. By moving with the times, a product can remain an enduring favorite. Where do you see design going from here? The age of mass production and mass consumption is over, and the great earthquake and tsunami of 2011 brought a huge change in the way people think about possessions. Ryan. People used to think prosperity meant having lots of stuff and always buying the newest, trendiest things. Now, it's totally different. People are starting to only buy things that mean something to them. They're choosing to buy stuff they can believe in that gives them a sense of inner satisfaction I believe we have entered a new era. I work as a model, and in the fashion world, naturally, trends come and go all the time. But something like a simple white collared shirt will never go out of style. It's forever fashionable. Like all the things we've seen today, they're old but still feel new. When I look at your idea of long life design, I think it must be something like that. Young people today want to have this furniture from the 60s in their homes. That tells us that this is something with a classic appeal that it's never going to lose. It's universal. It's timeless. Something that transcends eras. My ideal is for the buyer to know who they're buying from and the seller to know who they're selling to. The usual situation is that people are buying stuff made who knows where and companies are making stuff that will be sold to who knows who. But we as designers can stand in the middle. 
providing a marketplace that enables these two parties to get to know each other. It's a whole new concept of design. Since we only sell stuff from people we know to people we know, we can eliminate a lot of needless packaging and customer service and that kind of thing. We would never sell a substandard item, and our makers would never make one, because we both always have our customers in mind. It sounds like you are pioneering a new future in which the point of products is to connect people. Your long-life design philosophy brings together people who make things with care, people who curate those products, and people who lovingly use them. In a new model of what prosperity means, you've shown us the future of design today. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you for a fascinating conversation. You're welcome. Thank you. Nagaoka is also a professor at the Kyoto University of Art and Design. Today he's inspecting his students' design projects. He has led these designers in training to think about the possibilities in long life design to think about how to design things that will be loved and used for years. Designs that don't depend on novelty value.